Hello and welcome to another episode of The Aftermath. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Dylan. It's strong on that opening there. Well, you know, it's been it's a, a return to form. I know. It's, I, I feel like we, we come roaring through the gates. I feel like I had to like give it a good a good gusto on this one because it's been a minute since we've recorded. Here in the bunker, we got the gumption. <laughs> right. Here in the gumper, we got the bumption. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, so... Uh, to your regu- regularly scheduled program. Yes, I um, I went on vacation, went to Disney World, and had a fun time. It was Fucking great. Bastard. Oh, I we need to plan a trip, dude, with you to go somewhere nice and have a va- have a vacation. That does sound nice. I want to go on, like a friend's trip. It's super cool. Um, but anyways, it was it was a much needed vacation. It's yeah. been it's been a long time for me, and uh, I come back a proposed man. Or I guess engaged man. I don't know what the correct terminology is for that. But yeah. how'd that go? So by the way, it was great. We had a. It was a. Um, we ended out the vacation just like we started it. We kind of stumbled across this beautiful like Italian restaurant. Mm-hmm. That was just this picturesque scene. It was just a. It, we were just wanting to get some dinner. Right. Kind of at this like big mall complex called Disney Springs. And uh, we sat down, fell in love with it, and it was just everything we could have asked for. And it really just set a precedent for the vacation. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to kind of swindle her into going back there because I didn't have the ring the first go round when I went there. Oh, I see. But then I, we came back at the end. I had the ring with me that time and um, popped the question in a little booth. Nice dim lighting and some music, and the mood was all set. And it was just a, it was, it was a great Damn. experience. It was just the perfect scenario. Right, right, right. And of course, she said yes, and I, she had a hand in like picking her own ring too. I told her I was like, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money on a ring, I want you to pitch <laughs> on it. I want you to like Gotta it. Gotta make sure please. it's one that you'll always want to wear. Right. So she gave me like two options, but she kind of was like, "But I want that one." It's kind of you know that. Right. <laughs> so, um. Uh, there's the option and there's and there's the option. Yeah, the, qu- the quote unquote <laughs> right. option. Um, so yeah, but everything went well. The, like I said, the vacation. It, it, there was only a couple days that was like unbridled Florida sun, and it was just oh god, oh, it was a little hard to yeah. get over. But it was still sweltering. Yeah, it was still good though. But one thing I will say was I was hoping that it would be like a little bit cooler by the time we got there. Not anything crazy. Like I know it's Florida. Obviously, I'm not. You know, we're not too far away from Florida. We have very similar weather. I was just being a little optimistic. I was like, we have. It is is like like July. We'll say naive. No, 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 no. Optimistic. <laughs> Let's be like. Hear me out. Right. Traditionally, it, when where we live at, mm. July and August is the hottest parts of the year. Yeah. By the time August like rounds up, like like it's still hot. Don't get me wrong. Right mid 80s you know it, it happens and i'm not I'm, I'm i'm okay with it i've right. come to terms with it when you live down here in this part of the south you just i like to call it you hell. Hand, you, yeah you handle <laughs> it so that's what I, I so i went in with the idea of we're we're going to be going like the first week of september i was like it shouldn't be like 90 degrees like that that rarely ever happens around here where it stays that way for a f- full three months or, right. or a full two months whatever so, we get there, and man, the first day there, 98 degrees, Whoa. feels like 107. I was like, yep, that God. sounds about right. But the, oh, It's like I never left. <laughs> but, but, the, but the thing that, the, thing, the, um, the, the uh, how, do you, how do you put this? What really kicked me while I was down mm-hmm. was that it was kind of hot while we were there, the whole, the whole week we were there. But the first two days I come back to work here, in, in where we live at here in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Starting to cool the, off a little. Not, not even starting to cool off. It feels beautiful. It's warm, right. you know, some days. But in a pleasant way. But in a pleasant way. And not I was a, like, and I was like. Humid and disgusting. And so, and so that's what I'm saying whenever people, because people say the same thing. You're like, oh, naive. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I was right. It, right. The, it, it is hot but not nearly as hot as it was for July and August. Yeah. I was like, was, th- this is what, I, there's I a rhythm. About it often, there is it a is method. Awful. There's a method to this bullshit ass weather's madness. And I've got some of it <laughs> down. And I was like, I was really hoping that would, and, and we were going to, we're going to get there and like, it, it's going to be hot, but not, not just this. Right. Unbearable hot. Anyways. So I won't, I won't Wild. keep, yeah, I want to keep talking about the weather anymore, but it was, <laughs> but it was a good trip though. And it was a nice chance for us to just be, people two need of to us. know. 
<laughs> yeah, you're right, right. It was a chance if for us to plan to go on a vacation down here. Don't. No, I mean you can if you if you're just at least at the proper time of year. If you like to burn alive, heck yeah, you love yeah. it down here. It's like walking around in a frying pan. Mm. Oh man, a sauna. Mm-hmm. It's literally what it is outside. <laughs> right. Sauna, yeah. hot, wet, angry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of it. It really loosens your pores. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, for the, this one was. Uh, more of a long time in the making than I thought it was going to be. Oh, really? I mean, we we definitely had we, you had posed this one uh, mm-hmm. well, a couple times. Yeah, we had almost watched it. I think twice. We're like, I really wanted to watch it, yeah. and you had offered it, and I was like, just n- it didn't just, work out. It just didn't work out. Times, but right. that's okay. Here we are. And see, the funny thing is, I didn't even really want to do it as like a podcast episode, but mm. I thought about it. And I remembered yeah. a few things about the movie, and I was like, oh, well, now I have to. Well, now we have to talk about it. <laughs> it's perfect. Well, um, so we gave the first Transformers film, Michael Bay Transformers film, a um, a podcast episode. Yes. But we didn't do... We did not do the second one. Is that Age of... Ex- what was the other one? Revenge of the Fallen. Revenge of the Fallen. We did not do that, but I think we... <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little under the weather, so... Bear with me. Um, we just kind of touched on that one, yeah. right? It was more so that I was fine with leaving our foray into the Bay films at the first one. Ah, I see. And in hindsight, I kind of wish we did do an episode on the second one because I remember you ended up liking it more than I thought you would. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a good example of like a, a well-made... Um, uh, sequel film, yeah, in in how it uh, executes, uh, like like the continuation of a good story. I feel right. like, um, I don't know why these films. I mean, maybe it's just because of. Well, I'm not gonna get into that right now. Yeah, I don't understand why these films kind of have like a like a low rating. I can understand the later ones, possibly. Uh, Once yeah, we start getting off the rails <laughs> a little bit. The later ones. I've seen some clips of the new ones. I'm like, man, these are not good. You, even this one, I, I think. This one has a higher rating than the second one. Really? I mean, at least for Rotten Tomatoes is concerned. Oh, um, let see. I'm not, now, again, I really don't think that, you know, ratings really doesn't mean anything. I mean, I think it, it probably means something to somebody. But one from, cent. Yeah, one cent. Four doubloons. Oh, <laughs> That's about all you can count them for. Right. Um, so anyways, I just... Uh, <laughs> these films remind me of a specific time in history. They do. Just like... Um, just like when we watch like, The Breakfast Club. Oh, or yeah. you watch like an 80s action flick. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not so much... I don't rem- remember <clears throat> the second one. It's been a, been a minute. Yeah. But I know specifically the first Michael Bay Transformers film reminds me of 2007. Without question. It just has that. It has. A ju- product it just, of the era. It just drips with that 2007 energy. In a few decades, that's going to be considered a period piece. I, well, at this point, <laughs> no, 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 not even because isn't it? Isn't well, I, well, I guess it's for cars and stuff. Yeah. Isn't most things vintage after 20 years? I believe so. I can't remember what the benchmark is for that, actually. We got like five years until that's vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, regardless, I just. I, they have a certain feel about them. Mm-hmm. They feel like a. Um, like a point in time in history. Right. And I feel like a certain kind of demographic really enjoyed them at that point in time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the second and the third one kind of like re- reiterate some of that as well. Yeah. Which is why I think people kind of shit on it a little bit because it is like, it is a certain stereotype. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying. 
super sexy girl. I mean, right. and, like I, I just Big I did some explosions. Re- I just did research on her beforehand just because I was trying to figure out more of the characters. And I don't really see her name on a lot of stuff. Yeah. She's not an actor. She's just a model. Wow. <laughs> she's straight up just a, a model. <laughs> wow. So they just they hired a supermodel to be an actor in the film, an actress in the film. That the explains main protagonist more than I thought it was. <laughs> right, right. So it's it's it, it, it's it's that kind of um, vibe where it's just big <laughs> machines, explosions, supermodels running around. You know what I mean? It's like it's is that. Oh, um, uh, can a slightly we, scuffed up supermodel <laughs> mouthing yeah. off to fucking Megatron. <laughs> You're just his bitch. Uh. I was like, damn. <laughs> she had to get clapped right there, but I mean, hey, I guess it's... <laughs> at that point, she's seen enough, so I mean, hey, you yeah. know. Willing to do anything at this <clears throat> point. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this movie, may I say... Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let me let me yeah. let me let me, yeah. let me take the yeah. let me take take the first bite right off the top. Yeah. I never understood the name of the, of the movie. <laughs> Dark of the Moon. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when this movie uh, came out. I was like, shouldn't it be Dark Side of the Moon? Yeah. And everyone's like, no, it's just ah. da- it's just Dark of the Moon. And I was like, but wait, that just sounds like a man's <laughs> name, right? That just sounds like a guy, like a guy who. A guy named Dark who lived on the moon who came down to... to he is Earth. of the moon. Yeah. I lost my friend Dark of the moon. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, anyways, so... It's odd. It, I, don't, I never understood, like, the wording of that, but obviously I loved the intro of the film, which is, like... Oh, yeah, the subversion of yeah, Apollo 11. Apollo 11 is all uh, actually just a cover-up to hide... Right, the conspiracy yeah. theorists were close on this one. It wasn't fake, but it right. is a cover up. Yeah, exactly. We'll take your uh, your conspiracy oh and make it into a film. I thought it was interesting and it's cool. Yeah. I really enjoyed CGI Kennedy. Oh, I mean, it was a, <laughs> a, left a lot to be desired. I feel like, yeah, a bit jarring to look a, at. <laughs> a bit weird, but um, they still splice it with like old footage of his speeches and all all that. But man, is it weird? It's it's real noticeable. A deep fake has come a long way. Yeah. May I say. That is probably, out of this entire film, the one and only weak CGI scene. Yeah. The CGI Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Everything else, and when I mean everything, I pro- I promise you, at this point in time, we're at the the trilogy, the third film of this, kind of like the the bookend of this little... Um, romp, romp through the Transformers. So, you, man, the budget is just there. <laughs> That's why I love it, dude. It's front and center, dude. People give these movies a bad rap for substantial yes. reasons. I won't deny. Right, but I enjoy them for the same reason I enjoy the Jurassic Park films. Ah, uh, it's like a B movie subplot with a shit ton of money, like yes, just pumped just, into it. Just to and, uh, bulldoze like the, into it. The budget is noticeable, but I mean. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, like, this may be because... <coughs> excuse me, jeez. This may be because I come from that time, mm-hmm. and I was, like, a teenage boy whenever the, yeah. they first came out. But, like, even the dialogue, where some of the dialogue's probably weak, it's still kind of funny sometimes. Right. Some of the jokes maybe not, not hit so much. Yeah. But I, I think it's... The jokes are pretty good throughout... And then one saving grace, I will say, there are a handful of very good actors and actresses in this film. Yeah. But one in particular, I, 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 to- I totally forgot about because again, he's kind of been not around anymore. Mm-hmm. Is Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> yeah. How great of an actor he is! Yeah, dude. At least in these in these three films. That we've seen so far, and this one specifically, the way his he's quick, his 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 quips are so funny <laughs> yeah. and timely, and just the way he talks in the scenes are just feel so real and yeah. just he does a good job, authentic, and it and it really sells. Um, the it really sells how good the movie is, mm-hmm. even though you're like this movie's not that great, and it <laughs> kind of feels a little you know like a little ah, it's a little hammy right. in certain areas. Then he comes on stage. You're like, yeah, I, I believe it. I love we're Shia here. Right, right, we're here. It's him. 
my the perfect scene that I can point to for that is whenever <laughs> is whenever he drives up to um what we can only assume is this like military base, but they're saying it's like this is health and human resources or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, You have you know, you have a uh, AR fifteens and you're over here like you know, what, <laughs> what you, are you garden uh, colostomy bags? Yeah, right. <laughs> Foot cream. <laughs> Let me in. And he just starts <laughs> shouting at them and of course they're not giving him any time of day. Right. And then <laughs> he poor dri- security guards have to deal with this fucking <laughs> he psychopath. Drive, he drives up to this like impenetrable wall that then shoots <laughs> up and then the pillars push the car up. Mm-hmm. And he's just screaming. He just ah! loses it. Ah! <laughs> and then of course he like, you know, Bumblebee comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. He jumps out of the car, and then not only is like the <laughs> the security guards not sure what's happening, but also his girlfriend is now like seeing this for the first time. And is like, what's happening? Just and standing he, there, aghast. He he stands out there and he's like, "What the heck, dude? <laughs> Why are you, you just leave me hanging like this? I understand you have an important mission, and I don't right. want you to feel like you can't do that because you can. <laughs> but just know that like I'm struggling out here, man. Right." And then, of course, like, <laughs> Bumblebee is this massive robot. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> he's like, look what the, the piece of shit that I'm driving over here. Like, I can't. Fucking jalopy. Oh, dude, like, just help me out here. <laughs> and then, of course, he walks Jilt over. tripping a giant robot. <laughs> yeah. He walks over to his girlfriend. And he's like, I'm sorry about that. Come on. Like, he's, <laughs> like he reprimanded his child or right. something. And I'm like, what? Sorry, I had to see that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I had to see that. Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, and it just felt so... Um, just so interesting and mm-hmm. dynamic that that scene and I and I love it. And there's more more <laughs> like that in this film where he just kind of like where where he uh, where Shia LaBeouf as an actor is kind of just let loose mm-hmm. to like make <laughs> yeah. the performance great. And I think he did a great job. I'm wondering how many of his lines were so, ad libbed. Oh, I mean, there's there's a handful <laughs> of like he just a has so many. At the very I least. love his sarcastic quips for yeah. just so many things. It, it, it <laughs> yeah. is just a good. I don't know. It's really funny. I remember, like I said, I remember enjoying the second one because of the fact that it feels like it builds upon, like a, um, like we have like a good story and it was concise and I feel like it ended well in the first one, mm-hmm. and then the second one takes that, but then of course builds upon it, which I think is what makes a great, um, <coughs> excuse me, cheese, yeah, what makes a great sequel. That's what you do with a sequel is go above and beyond. Instead of like trying to like rehash things or like um I I learned this recently from some friends that I was like sitting down with and talking about um storytelling stuff with and they're like keep in keep in mind or like try to keep in mind what you are like in the moment. Mm. Like <coughs> if you have a first film excuse me, I'm sorry. You have a first film, and and you like you have created a journey, and that is uh, you've created characters. They have gone through some struggle, and they have come to some resolution of some kind. To make a sequel to do that is to is to not look back on what we were. I mean, like you can, and that could like right, help. You still got to keep in mind like everything that happened, right? But, but what they're saying is like don't try and like rehash the past and like. Like li- have them live out in the present, looking in the past. You know, you can like have some throwbacks to stuff, but don't let that be like the core. Right? Is that you know is try to be focused in in the now and like in what is happening, and then and, and some and, new stuff, and then have some progression in that. Um, anyways, and I felt like the second one had did that, and then I feel like this one does a very similar thing as well. I don't quite remember how the second one ends. I know that. Um. Megan Fox gets a ditch from the production somehow. Yeah. Or, or they, I think they break up, quote unquote. At, is it at the end of that film? No, it's had happened in between the two okay. films. So, anyways, she's no no longer part of the film. But um, I think this um, uh, this movie did a good job. I think incorporating the new love interest mm-hmm. and um. I mean, for an action movie that right. is, you know, it just, surface level, right? It is what it is. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It I, was. It, it, it was about two and a half hours. About two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. So it was not too long. Um, <laughs> I remember uh, while we were getting like right up to the end, Ian asks me, "Do you, do you know how much? Uh, like how much longer we have?" 
<laughs> well, I was just curious. Like, yeah. I because I, I because this the cool thing about this movie is there's uh, there's a plot twist that I would say happens probably like a a little bit past halfway, yeah, a third right of the way through, where um, Sentinel Prime gets you know rescued. Mm-hmm. Nurse back to health. Everything's fine. He seems then, to be on their side. Yeah, and then all of the a sudden, heel turn. Right, he betrays them. Kills and Ironhide, like, and it's like, damn, dude, it disintegrates him. Oh yeah, <coughs> lots of folks die. In yeah, this one. it's rough, dude. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, what was I saying? Talking about oh oh oh, it was, uh, yeah, just this whole like kind of plot twist happens where yeah. like, all of a sudden now. The guy that we're trying to protect, because again, that's what we were like working up to this point. Right, I was like, talking he's about the, this technology that would win them the war back right. in the day. He is, uh, he's protecting this technology to keep him alive because he's the only one that can actually activate it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And out of nowhere, wham bam. Thank you, man. He's in cahoots with the bad Get guy. Get fucked. <laughs> um, I don't remember the guy's name, the actual actor's name, but he plays in Grey's Anatomy. Oh Let's God, see. he does. Yeah, he does. I um, didn't even recognize. He's like him. he's like the main hunk doctor, the guy. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Patrick Dempsey. Hmm. Um, again, another great actor. Really good job, and he kind of plays like the the human equivalent of the antagonist, which was yeah. a cool take to have, where you have these like two opposing forces that are working mm-hmm. together. But it also it, it it I I think it's something interesting because of how the other films kind of work too is I think it, I think this method works because of the fact that we're talking about a movie with big robots. Mm -hmm. I think it's always nice to kind of have like a, a human equivalent of a a bad guy to have the humans involved in the scene, like have something to also fight for or Mm -hmm. fight with. Instead of just being like humans running away from giant robots, <laughs> right. and of course trying their best to kill them, but obviously to no avail. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that's what his character feels like, and, and that's another kind of little plot twist that happens out of nowhere. It's like, yeah. which I thought was really interesting. So big mix scumbag. Yeah, but anyways, it was. A, I really enjoyed this film um, again more than I thought I would, and I think that now watching this one. Through its entirety, I can say that the original Michael Bay, like Transformer trilogy film, Mm -hmm. films are are really good. Not a bad watch. I like them. Mm -hmm. I have not watched any of the other ones, so I cannot (laughs) say that. It it might stay that way. Oh, yeah? Maybe. (laughs) I was going to leave that up to you. Um, I guess it depends. Yeah. If there's anything really worth watching, I just feel like it, you I mean, could, they bring the Dinobots back in the next one. I know I was never a really big fan of Dinobots. <laughs> uh, I'm ready for uh, Optimus Primal. That's what I want. Yes, dude, <laughs> fucking Beast Wars. I'm, That's I'm apparently I'm coming out in 23. I'm excited about that. <laughs> Speaking of monsters, do we know when the next? Uh, MonsterVerse films coming out? I have no idea. I I remember seeing like a, a sort of a roadmap thing that they had set aside for all the movies they were planning or hoping to make. Right. But uh, I haven't heard or seen like hide nor hair of the series in a bit. I hope they're still making stuff. But uh, yeah, who knows? let's see. It might just be out of season. Maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, I, I'll look it up later. I can't yeah. find any, anything. I got a question for you. Yeah, what's that? What did you think of Soundwave and Shockwave's designs? Okay, That's so funny. I was a little confused by which one was which. Mm-hmm. So they have the... The like, uh, vulture guy, vulture guy yeah, was laser on, beak. Laser beak was on the, on the the arm of who? Soundwave. Soundwave, mm-hmm. and he was the guy like with the with the beatbox shoulders, 
<laughs> in the in the OG days. Yeah, he he turned into a boombox. Oh, and wow. his cassette tapes were little mini cons that he would send out oh, to no. do his bidding. <laughs> wow. Um so that was Soundwave. And then Shockwave, is he the guy with like like he was the, was the Cyclops yeah, with the, the Cyclops big arm guy. cannon? You you've <laughs> seen other iterations of him, specifically the one from uh Transformers Prime, which is yeah. my personal favorite version of the dude. But um yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of don't mind Shockwave's design in this. Mm-hmm. But Soundwave is, I don't know, he's like indistinguishable from like the yeah. jobber Decepticons. Oh, yeah. <coughs> he also is constantly with that like, or piloting, or I don't know what he's doing with that like worm beast. That's Shockwave. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm confused. That's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the big fucking like drill worm. Yeah. So I thought the Cyclops guy was with the the worm thing. Yeah. Okay, so that's Shockwave. It's the sound wave. He appears. Yeah. He shows up he's every, now, every and now and then, but he's just... I guess that's that's the problem for me. Is I had like a hard you, time you would only know who he was if Megatron addressed him directly, and he was also on screen. <laughs> I see. Which sucks. Yeah. I wish he had... I wish that... Like, the thing is, I like the designs of the Decepticons. Right. Hold on one second, please. Jagged, misshapen. Yes. Just chunks of metal with limbs. <laughs> um, I think it fits that whole evil, like... Well, and th- so that's that's the point that I was trying to make, is I love the designs of them, because they do have that kind of evil, mm-hmm. just hunks of metal and stuff. Right. It's kind of crazy. But I do kind of wish that they would have incorporated a little bit of color, perhaps, yeah. into some of them. Because they're like, all just, like... Metal. I, like now I understand. Steel. I think I understand why. Because mm-hmm. the Autobots are all so colorful, right? Because of you know reasons. Mm-hmm. But I mean, even if it's like just like muted colors, so that way it's you know, it's differentiating between like the other brighter right. ones. I don't know. Shockwave had a, a distinguishable, like darker, like really deep purple hue to him. Oh yeah. yeah. If you look real close, but other than that. Not yeah. much else going on. Interesting. Well, like I said before, this was this the the film didn't feel too terribly long, but I loved the fact that it kept it kept building upon itself, and it kept it kept like making twists and turns, right. and of course that final like third act. Oh, dude! In like any true Michael Bay Transformers film, the crescendo. I just love the fight sequences that like kind of go on. What for what I feel like it definitely, right. but it's like, but it feels fluid though. Oh, yeah, like it, it all feels choreographed or, or you know, within reason. Like, you like, want to talk about Optimus <laughs> landing in the middle of the street and taking out like oh, eight Decepticons? Man. Yes, so, so, uh, shockwave included. Damn, it's rips the dude's eye out. Yes, man. And then, of course, you even talked about this, like, is the 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 kind of climax of the um the film mm-hmm. whenever our uh female protagonist you know, the supermodel decides to strut <laughs> strut the runway in front of Megatron <laughs> and basically tell him like I mean kind of tell him what we already know we've right. already seen some and again this is their plan at this point was to bring Cybertron to Earth so that they yeah. could force the humans to help rebuild it Right. And <laughs> a pecking order has been established in which Megatron is not at the top. Now, of course, this doesn't sit well with him. He's already, like, in a weakened state and almost has, like, given up. Right. And he's like, oh, I don't care. My home world's here. I'm just going <laughs> to chill out for now, I guess. Right. Well, I think he's kind of probably trying to live into that, like, I'm just going to rule over and everyone else do my bidding kind of thing. Right. At least that's what it feels like, but I'm, mm-hmm. you know. Uh. <laughs> and then this fucking blonde mm-hmm. walks up and is like, so what you gonna do, pal? Yeah. <laughs> You're clearly at the bottom of the ladder. Right. Must not feel very nice as opposed to what you're used to, am I right? Right. And he's like, I guess you have a point. 
<laughs> no, no not, not even. He gets pissed off and gets all up in her face. <laughs> he, gets, <laughs> right. he gets mad. You damn yeah. extra me, slave. And, and then, of course, then she's like, and at the end of the day, when all this is said and done, all you're going to be is Sentinel's bitch. And he's <laughs> like, and of course, that's all it took to just send so him over this bitch. makes the Megatron think. Yes. Makes and then we feel. see the coolest fucking save yeah, he, sorry, save quote, quote, unquote, unquote, yeah. <laughs> that he's ever made. Right. As uh, Optimus has begun fighting Sentinel <laughs> to try to keep the pillars from being reactivated. Right. He loses an arm. Yeah. And is in the process of, like, he's about to be executed. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, Megatron shows up with his fucking sawed-off rifle. Oh, yeah. And just mutilates Sentinel. Mm. Right. At first, I thought he blew his head off. I think he blew like his <laughs> helmet piece off or whatever. Oh yeah. And then of Knocked course his he gets, helmet off. Yeah. Ripped a bit of his guts out. Yeah, yeah. He got all like jostled around. And then of course Optimus comes in and is like, "I'm not. I'm done with this shit." Yeah. And then just takes. I mean, <laughs> dude, dude, the lines there. Are yes. Amazing. Yeah. I just love, love the fact it. that he like he just, I mean, takes an axe to the head. <laughs> yeah. Of Megatron. Mm -hmm. Pulls out spine and all. Actually kills him. Yes. And then, of course, just drops on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then, dude, the raw-ass lines between Sentinel and Optimus Prime (laughs) were out of this world. Mm -hmm. Whenever he's sitting there and he's like, I I had to save the world. I hope you know why I betrayed all that kind of stuff. He's like, nah, son. You played yourself. Yeah, right. And then Bing (laughs) Pong. He's like, nope, no, please, no. (laughs) Just blasts him in the head. Twice. And just blast him again in his oh, chest. Yeah. He's like, oh, shit, dude. You're done. Get out of here. <laughs> it's in my world now. Yeah. Always was. Killed all of the opposition. Dude. I mean, at that point, you know, you can't, uh, you can't trust, you can't trust that person at that point. Oh, uh-uh. No. That's treason. <laughs> right. The highest degree. Fool me once, shame on me. <laughs> yeah. Fool me twice, everyone yeah. dies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shoddy blast in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Mm-hmm. Damn, dude. Man. I always love the kind... I, I love that kind of cub up its kind of situation where... I, I love situations like at the end of that movie where our, like, protagonist is in the process of almost dying mm-hmm. to the person who was once the good guy, right. who is now for some reason trying to, or is the bad guy because of decisions. Yeah. And then when the tables get turned, they'll beg for their life, like, oh, no, don't mm-hmm. do it. Like, I'm like sorry. A bitch. Yeah, and of course, like, you almost killed me, and I and now took you, it like a man, and now <laughs> you sit here like a little piss baby. Yeah. You know, take it. <laughs> it's like the... It's like the in the original, like the animated movie, whenever yeah. Megatron's like <laughs> begging for mercy. Yeah. And Optimus is like, you who are without mercy, now plead for it. Oh, damn. I, I for- thought you were made of sterner stuff. Damn, I, I forgot about that. It's so good. That shit's raw. Mm-hmm. That's a good one right there. <laughs> yeah. The, I, I guess my one and only gripe that I think I have with this movie is that I feel like the fight between Optimus and Megatron should have lasted like just a bit longer. Mm. Like, yeah, that's a final showdown between two lifelong rivals. It feels oh, like. Right. But at that point, I, I I did like I did like how effective it was though. Oh yeah, especially he wasted it, no time. <laughs> I I like he's down an arm. He ain't got time to fuck around. Nah. <laughs> I love how just effective he is, even with one arm. Oh yeah, take it out too bad. You can't stop no. Him. So good, mm-hmm. and I and the thing is for me, I, I'm actually quite pleased with how that movie ended. Yeah, and, I mean, like, like you know, like the culmination of that entire movie that was right. great, and as well as like a trilogy of Transformer films. Yeah. So at that point in time, could have been worse. No, no, I'm, no, no. I was just saying, like, if nothing else happens after this, I'm happy. Right. Like that is that is the end. Of, well, the end then of an age. We go. You got, got nothing to worry about. They got milked for three more movies. <laughs> oh god! So yeah, but it's uh <laughs> okay. Man. But I'm giving Beast Wars a shot. Though. Of course, just one good try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need to relive those memories. That's interesting. <laughs> I need a shot in that movie of Megatron aiming a rifle at a gorilla. 
Oh, man. Uh, something happens? Yes. Oh, no. Out of context, it looks fucking hilarious because you assume, oh, that's just a gorilla. Why is he, <laughs> why is he going to kill a, a random gorilla? <laughs> okay. Uh, so what is... Um, what is Beast Wars about? Beast Wars is a future timeline, like okay. after the events of the original series. And... At least, at least I th- I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I, I, can, I can't remember too well, but man, it was some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah. It's it's where another one of my favorite lines from Megatron comes from. It's like some onboard system inside the Ark, I think, is warning him not to do something. And he's like, duly noted and ignore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Wow. And you said this like a CGI show? Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's like in the vein of reboot. If you've ever seen oh, that, oh no, that early CGI stuff. Yeah, man, <laughs> oh, man. it's something else. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. But man, it was funny. Right. All right. Let's get on to some fun facts. Yeah. If I can, wait. If I can find them. <laughs> fun fact number one: Starscream gets as as embarrassing a death as he deserves. How does he die again? <laughs> so, he's got uh, Sam and Carla cornered, like, in an alleyway between buildings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Sam uses a grappling hook, fires it at his yes. eyes, and he spends the next, like, ten minutes fumbling around trying to kill them. Flailing around. Until Sam gets a, a grenade in his other eye. Oh, God. And then the next 10 minutes are him flailing around like a dumbass until right. his head explodes. Crazy. Mm-hmm. He's a lovable little scamp, though. I can't help but uh, root for him. <laughs> it says that this probably isn't a huge surprise since movies rarely depict DC accurately, but mm-hmm. it says that Washington, DC depicted in the Transformers. Dark of the Moon film looks nothing like DC, actually. Really? Supposedly. Hmm. But Bay uh, did take the time to shoot for several days um, at the Capitol. Some of those scenes. uh, A quick shot of Optimus Prime in truck form speeding down the DC streets. And a newswoman doing a live shot in front of the Capitol appear. Oh, yeah. Um, but generally speaking, DC looks completely unrecognizable, um, full of impossibly tall buildings, street <laughs> signs that make no sense, and uh, a vibe evocative of a less stylized version of Sin City. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's what it says. Damn. As opposed to the real, like, Washington, DC. Right. Um, That's funny. It says Dark of the Moon, maybe the first 3D movie to feature an appearance uh, by Barack Obama. Oh, God. Yeah. John F. Kennedy and Richard Dixon <laughs> and Billy O'Reilly. <laughs> oh, Not that's kidding. Crazy. They're all in there. Wow. wow. Interesting. Pooh-wee. This is the one that I had read a little bit earlier. It says that there are some pretty um, rude references to Megan Fox that are not very kind. Um, to her, like, previous character. Oh, yeah. It says that in an early scene, uh, Shia LaBeouf's character is talking to his new girlfriend uh, about, or sorry, his new his girlfriend new supermodel. Ab- about his ex and he, saying, like, she was mean and I didn't like her and stuff like that. And then, of course, later he's talking to his parents and he says something along the lines of, like, she dumped me and I moved on and got something better. And yeah. it kind of is all these, like, tongue-in-cheek references um, supposedly, um, like as Bay's way of uh, you know of talking, yeah. talking down to Megan Fox, slander. um, for past remarks comparing him to Hitler. Jesus, uh, he did, or she did to, her, to him. So, damn. <laughs> um, well, okay, I don't know where I want to go with that one. Oh. <laughs> Not um, for your ears. What? Who's the Who's the guy? Ken Jeong, is that his name? 
Kid Jong. The um the crazy <laughs> the guy. Wang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god. Is in the movie <laughs> and he is a manic delight. He's honestly. Insane. <laughs> honestly, Transformers Dark of the Moon would have benefited from more of him in our personal <laughs> opinion, but it is uh he was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's That's see. These aren't really these aren't really fun facts. These are just kind of just regular facts. Just regular facts. We don't bother with general information here, folks. Yeah, I want more. <laughs> Let's see. Is there anything else? I don't. I don't think so. I'll be looking around. Mm. <sighs> so, who is your favorite character? <laughs> Man, I know because of the, the the standard I usually try and follow, I can't pick Sam, Shia LaBeouf's character. Well, then the next choice should be obvious, and I'm hoping you make the right decision. I doubt it. Um, I'm trying to think of a human character and a, a Autobot character. Okay. Because I feel like I can't just... You can't pick one. Mm-hmm. I love the return of that other of that guy uh, of John Tartaro, I think his name. Oh yeah, Agent Simmons. Oh god. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. I love the fact that his character has returned yeah. subsequently. He's a funny character. Mm-hmm. I kind of like his character a lot. Bit of a crackpot. I love the fact that Leonard Nimoy was in this film. Yeah, I what completely a, forgot. He is the Sentinel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, what a... I heard his voice, and I don't think I would have picked it out <laughs> as early as I did, except for the fact that we watched Atlantis as our last episode, mm-hmm. and he was the like father the figure. King. The king. What an interesting experience. But yeah. one, thing I, <laughs> the one thing I thought was a little bit of a low-hanging fruit... <laughs> Uh, I was like, "Come on, you didn't have to do that to him." Right? Was That's they a good reference? Like right towards the end of the movie, like probably last ten, fifteen minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. I forgot what was the lead up to it, but he's like doing something, and he's like, "Don't you know that the, the needs, needs of the many outweigh the, the needs of the few?" It's like, come on, <laughs> you ain't gotta do that to him. You could have picked like a more obscure uh, spot reference. Been so funny. God damn. I think they threw another one in there. Whenever uh, Bumblebee is about to be executed, he says goodbye, old friend, which I believe was Kirk's line to Spock whenever he died in the Wrath of Khan. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think that was Bumblebee saying that to somebody else. Yeah, whenever Sam was looking up at him from the car. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh. (laughs) Yeah. More Star Trek references than you'd think. Yeah. Buzz friggin' Aldrin was in there. Like, the real Oh, yeah. See, I was on the fence because I thought it was just some old guy that they got to play him. You want to know something crazy? He is still alive. Yeah. And he is 92 years old. Mm -hmm. That is nuts. Oh, God. Yeah, that's insane. He was born in 1930. (laughs) Wow, dude. Man, that is crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. (coughs) I want us to go back to the moon again. Yeah, that'd be great. Has the have the other two other two guys passed away? Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Yeah, pretty sure he's still around. At least he ought to be. Let's see. No, I don't see. Anyways, I'll look it up later. But anyways. Well, I think my favorite characters would have to be, of course, Murgatroyd. Who's that? <laughs> Megatron. <laughs> oh, Murgatroyd. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Neil Armstrong died in 2012. Wow. Yeah. I don't know why I thought he was still alive. I I thought it was so. Oh, wow. He actually, he didn't. He passed away after this movie was made. Really? Yeah, this movie was, this movie was released. How, do I, how did I not remember that Neil Armstrong is dead? I, I don't know. Um, 
Transformers Dark of the Moon came out in 2011, uh, June of 2011, and wow. he passed away August of 2012. Hmm. Damn. Well, shit, that uh, sucks. Dude, he was born on August 5th, 1930, mm-hmm. and he passed away August 25th. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Man. That is nuts. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so I w- w- that was I'm I'm going into some of this because the I love the line that, um, <laughs> that oh, like at the Houston <laughs> that yes, Houston says to him, he says <laughs> Neil, you're dark on the rock. What is, is that? What he said? Go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, they like they shut down all of like the TV shows and stuff, and they made it they like made it seem like there's no radio connection on like right, the other signal. side of the moon. So they finally get there, and of course they get the red, they get the walkie talkies out, and they're like, <laughs> "Okay, Neil, you're dark on the rock. Go, missions a go." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "That's just so funny to think about." Oh man, good stuff. All right, is there anything else you want to touch on on this? Uh, oh this man. Episode? I, well, I guess I didn't really give it a, a, my favorite character. I like I like Agent Simmons. I think he's funny. He's mm-hmm. cute, quirky, and weird. Um, as far as Autobots go, um, <laughs> man, I, I really liked Ironhide. Yeah, till he got blasted up. Yeah, sad. he was really cool until he died. <laughs> so, which one was the one? Which one is the guy uh, who's that new Corvette one? I think that was Sideswipe. Okay. He was very... I think he also died, didn't he? No, he was still okay, okay. I know that we... I know they had lost a handful of them in the... Yeah. In the fight. Mm-hmm. Anyways. That's one thing I realized is that uh, it seems like even in the <laughs> the traditional animated films, they're not afraid to kill off all right. the... Right. A lot of them died. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in this one, they <laughs> pulled no punches too. Oh, yeah. A lot of them died. Um that's actually kind of like a, r- a really interesting part of like the tale of this movie is like there's a couple times you're like they're going to kill off some like really big characters. Mm-hmm. Some of them get saved and then some of them not so much. Right. It's pretty gruesome. Like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like the whatever they're taking over the city and like oh, like yeah. actually like blasting stuff. Vaporizing people. Vaporizing people. That was, <laughs> that was another funny part for me. Oh my God. Like so they they start setting up the pillars everywhere to like bring Cybertron back and Sentinel's like it's time the humans learn to respect their new masters. Right. So, <laughs> all the Decepticons that have come through the space bridge just start going to town. I mean, just start and killing. murdering the town. Yes. Like, Painting the town red with everyone's blood. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I thought it was so funny just to think, like, you work for us now. Yeah. And he's, like, vaporizing, like, 20 people at a time. <laughs> There's like, no one left. My comment was, because cause the, the words that were used just before that were, we're going to be used as slave labor mm-hmm. to help build <laughs> the, uh, what is it called? Cybertron. The Cybertron back together. Mm-hmm. And of course, it, like subsequently, smash cut to like just people getting Wanted vaporized. Destruction. Like I'm just getting blasted by the by the dozens. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Well, man, what what good a lot of slave work's going to be if you're going to kill them all? You're like, not supposed not gonna, to kill your workers. Yeah. I mean, you maybe I mean, maybe you can kill some as like a you know set an example. Right, right, right. Damn. I was like, you're killing like by the dozen. Right, right. There's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> that was a whole crowd. You just could have had work for you." Uh, Anyways, a so whole house as a whole house just destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> you only really need to kill one dude. It's fine. Yeah. So, anyways, I really liked the film, and I think I thought it was nice. Even yeah. though the, probably the reviews are bad, I think that it probably is not going to age very well because there's probably some you know politically incorrect stuff in it. I still think it's fun. I, I, I love can it. Look past the the <laughs> the fucking. Uh, I'm just nervous. Any, any like nitpicks I would have because it's still like a fun enough movie that I can enjoy it. Right. It just it feels like what a modern '80s action film would look like. Yeah. Where it's funny, but it's also serious, but mm-hmm. it's also like not really that serious, and it's right. kind of it, interesting. It, and it's it takes itself seriously in some aspects. Yes. But in like a cheesy way, like almost yeah. endearing. Right. <laughs> and I love that. Mm-hmm. Just nervous that we're not going to have any cool films like that for very long just feels like rehashes of the same thing and it's all we need to watch prey i've heard many a thing about prey 
Really? Mm-hmm. Is that is that like one of the older? Like, is it an older film? It's the newest Predator film. Oh, oh, I, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't know that was what it was called. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, it's something. It's a concept they've touched on in like the comics, and that was hinted to in Predator Two, is that they've been hunting on Earth for eons now, like really? all through different time periods. And something I've always wanted to see is a predator go toe to toe with like a Neanderthal or a fucking like <laughs> colonial Englishman. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so funny. Wow, how interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wait, is that still in theaters or is it only streaming? It premiered exclusively on Hulu. Weird. I, I don't think it had a theater run. Oh, weird. Which is insane to me. Okay. Well. But we'll definitely have to give it a look. Of course. Well, hopefully in the next um, next week or so, we'll have some free time with Ethan, mm-hmm. and we can also um, watch another watch another good one with him and try and you know. Oh yeah. Get kind of ahead of ourselves because right now, you know, <laughs> we've been me, able to keep a good track with, record. With me going on vacation, we kind of <laughs> went a little behind on the on the schedule, but that's yeah. okay. That we're still good. Um. And, uh, and again, hopefully, I will be. I'll feel a little better. Just yeah. mostly congested and got a little. The plague will not be upon you me know? anymore. I only felt really bad for like a day or two. And then other than that, I've been just fine. like common just cold type really shit. Exactly, just common cold stuff. Changing of the season, and that didn't help that I traveled around. Right. And, oh, I overworked myself, so I'm just not surprised. I got a little <laughs> ill. The disease saw you and was like. <laughs> I got gotcha. prime real estate. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, um, thank you so much for listening. If you're looking for ways to get in touch with us, you Don't. can. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can do that, or you can go to Linktree for slash E. You should be able to find all of our links there, where you can uh, find the podcast we're listening to it, where to get in contact with us, and all that some Don't such nonsense. But, anyways, until next time, thank you so much for listening. See you later. Bye.